Have you ever wondered how bullet resistant your car doors are? Neither have I, but we're going to test it anyway. Welcome back to OG's Danger Show. Welcome back original gangsters og out here with you today it's another hot day but at least it's a little breezy out here better than the last couple of videos i made for you just when you thought you were safe and that i was probably done and i died in a fiery crash i'm back bringing you another video things have been crazy at work as you can imagine so it's taken me a while to get out here with the camera and uh and get something filmed the other day i was sitting there watching the video about the two la county sheriff's deputies that were shot inside their car tragic situation let's not go into the details on that however it got me to thinking how bulletproof is a standard car door and i know other videos have been done on youtube about this but i started to wonder you know for those of you just driving around with a regular old car how protective is your vehicle against different calibers against different uh, pistol rifle and shotgun calibers so i wanted to bring out here today um, my grandpa's lamborghini pickup I took the door off of his Lamborghini pickup and I'm going to uh, shoot some rounds through it. Let's take you over there real quick. I've made this lovely little green witness target out behind it. That's going to show if the rounds go through or if they fragment and shatter inside when they're hitting this door. They're going to show what kind of damage that you as a passenger or a driver in the vehicle might sustain going through this door, this Lamborghini pickup door. I didn't even know Lamborghini made pickups. But evidently they made an S10 and uh, it's a heavy little door. So good on those Italians. So I have a couple of different cameras out here to show you today, different angles. As we're shooting, I'm gonna have a camera on me and then I hope to have a camera back here in between our driver and the vehicle. I didn't put him right behind the door because we don't sit right behind the door. We actually sit a little distance away. He's mounted on a piece of plywood. So we're going to see I can show you here. I took off the panel on this door so you can actually see the rounds going through. This has been done before. This is nothing new, folks. But a lot of the YouTube videos, when they shoot uh, bullets through a door, they leave all the plastic panel on there. And then the window glass is also down, rolled down in there. Uh, we're going to simulate that the window glass is up and therefore out of our way. And I want to show you kind of what the rounds are doing as they pass through and what they would do to the inside of the metal. We don't really care what they do to the plastic interior of the vehicle after they pass through but I want to show you kind of the little exit hole here and then of course what it'll do to our lovely uber driver so I'm setting him up about 18 inches 24 inches away from the door which would simulate where your body would be in a vehicle okay if you're sitting there as a passenger or as a driver you're not going to be snugged right up against that door so I want to show you kind of what what those rounds will do he's not happy about this job but too damn bad you want a job in this economy you do the work okay so we have a number of calibers out here to show you today I happen to be carrying a nine millimeter pistol with me today I'm going to try with all the calibers I have at least I'm going to try and show you a ball round basic standard old target ammunition that you find at every range in Walmart compared with a hollow point round. We're gonna shoot all the way from that nine millimeter Glock 19. We've got a 40 caliber Glock 22, a 10 millimeter Glock 20, a 45 caliber Smith & Wesson M&P 45. And then we're gonna move up to some rifle rounds. Check this out. With me here on the truck today, I brought, we're gonna start with a 22, fired out of a Ruger 1022. We've got a hollow point round and then a soft lead round. We're going to move up to the 5.56 round with the old Bob Ross rifle that you saw in a previous video. We've got an SKS that's going to shoot our 7.62x39 soft tip round and ball ammunition. We've got a 308 
This is a Smith & Wesson M&P 10 shooting a 308 out of a 18 inch barrel. And of course, because it's the last rifle, the most recently acquired rifle in the OG Armory, I brought out a Ruger American in 6.5 Creedmoor. Oh yeah, we can't forget the old Remington 870. This is a Scattergun Technologies Remington 870 12 gauge. We're gonna shoot some double lot buck out of here, uh, federal flight control. And then I've also got a standard old Winchester Super X, I think it's called, um, a one ounce slug. Standard old lead rifled slug. So of course I show up today and forget the magazine for the Ruger 1022. We've got some, I think this is Remington 22 Thunderbolt. This is some old stuff. This one happens to be lead tipped round. Fortunately, I've got dainty fingers and I'm gonna feed them down into the chamber all by its little self with no magazine needed. Let's go, 22 Thunderbolt. Uh, let's start stacking the rounds, top left. Woo! That made a bigger hole than I thought. This might be a short test if 22 made it through there just fine. But, did it go through and injure our guy on the other side? Right here you can see the 22 exit hole. I'll be damned, 22 made it through. You can see where the 22, at least some shards, hit our driver, hit our unfortunate Uber driver, the UUD. And let's go around and take a look at the back. 22 round. 22 round made it through. Car door, two layers of metal. Made it all the way through this piece of, I don't know, half inch plywood and out the back. This might be a very short test, folks. All right, so we have a Remington, just some kind of a copper coated hollow point. Hollow points don't really do a lot in, uh, in 22s, folks, if you're ever out shooting with hollow points. They don't exactly expand like a regular round does. Let's give it a try though in this car door. Pretty much the same damage. A little bit different uh, exit hole this time. Doesn't look like it made it through. Huh, that's interesting. It punched out the middle there, but it did not make it all the way through. And of course it did not pass out the back of the plywood. Sounds like we need to move it up to some nine millimeter. All right, let's try some nine millimeter out of a Glock 19. Standard old Gen 5 Glock 19. Looks like today we have some Federal HST. Let's see how a nine millimeter hollow point does through there. And then of course we'll go with the ball ammunition. All right, nine millimeter. You can definitely tell the difference in a faster round. Not as, uh, not as smooth a hole, not as smooth an entrance. More of a uh, sharper hole and less paint chip chipping. 22's moving a little slower, so it's gonna drag some of that paint, chip some of that paint off. Nine millimeter, however, punches right through. I have a feeling our Uber driver felt that one. Let's go around the side. There it is, nine millimeter hole. And it looks to me like he took a good round there. If you're not safe from 9mm, you're probably not going to be safe from most of these rounds, but I still kind of want to see what they do. How about you? Okay, 9mm ball ammo. Well, I couldn't have put those two rounds closer together if I tried. Not really a lot of difference on the sheet metal between the first round and the second round. Maybe a little less paint chipping on that ball ammo. Our unfortunate Uber driver took a round right through him. Looks like both of those, both of those nine millimeter rounds punched right out the back here. All right, I'm gonna put these 40 caliber rounds right next to the nine millimeter rounds on the top of the door. For this test, we have the Winchester Ranger hollow point, which is essentially the black talon without the black. Little known fact or well-known fact, you be the judge, Winchester just took the black off of their black talon back in the 90s and started marketing the round as the Ranger SXT. Fired from a Glock 22. So this is why my agency happens to like 40 caliber 
for barrier penetration. We work in and around vehicles all the time. Although 9mm had no problem getting through, 40 caliber carved a nice clean hole through there. And there is our unfortunate Uber driver. He's got a 40 caliber hole through him. Actually a rather nice clean hole. You could tell this one brought a little bit of shrapnel with it. There was some metal uh, flying out with this. It kind of hit him out here. There's our 40 caliber hole. 40 had zero problems making it through. So let the haters hate all they want to about 40 caliber, but it does excellent work on uh, auto body metal, sheet metal. This is the uh, 40 caliber round passing right on through. I don't have any hardball 40 caliber ammunition, so let's skip that part. So we're gonna shoot 45 caliber next out of a Smith & Wesson m and 45. Look at that big old muzzle right there. That's what we call a BFH. This is huge. That's what she said. You could climb in that thing in inclement weather. Out of this uh, 45, I'm shooting, I don't know, some type of hollow point here. I'm not really sure 100% which round, which hollow point round this is, but you can see right behind it is a ball round ready to go. So let's try the hollow point first and then the ball round. So I don't think this 45 is going to really have any problem getting through the car door, but it does move a lot slower. It's a bigger, fatter bullet, almost a half an inch wide. So let's see if it performs as well as the 40 caliber in uh, reaching into the vehicle. Let's give it a try. All right, 45 hollow point. Well, I can tell you right now, it's probably gonna be a pretty short test. 45 hollow point. You can also see the difference in a slower moving round. Like the 22 rounds over here, the 45 goes in a little bit slower, drags a little more metal with it, and chips a little more paint than does the 40 caliber right next to it. But I think not really much of a surprise here. 45 went right through this car door. At least the hollow point did. Again, brought some shrapnel with it, but right through our unfortunate Uber driver. And right out the back of the half inch plywood. That's how confident I am that I'm gonna get it right there in that circle. All right, ball ammo. So if hollow point 45 will make it through there without any problem, I'm thinking ball ammo made it through there just fine. The holes are almost identical. And back here, unfortunate Uber driver looks like he took another one in the chest. Poor guy. And of course here is our 45 ball round. Didn't tear as much material flying out as these hollow point rounds have. It zipped right on out like a little laser beam and didn't drag a lot of wood with it. That's kind of expected. If you're having problems getting wood, you need to consult your doctor. Boy, it's a good thing we strapped that door down. All right, let's try 10 millimeter. I kind of think we know where this is going to go, but the hole will be interesting. The holes are always interesting, folks. All right, 10 millimeter out of a Glock 20. I'm not really sure what kind of rounds these are. They're from Underwood Ammo also. Maybe you can see in there. There we go. I think they're 135 grain jacketed hollow point. Let's put them in this Glock 20, send them through. Not even going to bother with the... Uh, Underwood Extreme Hunter rounds because this hollow point will go through in 10 millimeter, which if a 40 caliber is going to make it through, of course the 10, the, uh, 10 millimeter is going to make it through. Let's give it a try. 10 millimeter, right about here. Woo! 10 millimeter zipped right through. It's a lot faster than the 40 caliber. Hits harder than probably any of our pistol round so far zipped right through the door and right through our plywood we can also see right here it shot right through that metal had no problem going through and again being a hollow point it took a big chunk of plywood with it on its way out all right I'm getting tired of this pistol stuff let's try some rifles the Fight Light SCR. If you don't know about this rifle and it's somehow weird to you, it, it amazes me how many people are putting in the comments, that's an interesting rifle. I've never seen one like that before. Where does the bolt go? Listen, I've got a video on that. Go right down here in the channel and look up the video that I did all about the Fight Light. It'll show you exactly where the bolt goes. Since we're on the topic, viewer Alan contacted me in the comment section a couple days ago and said, hey, be watching your PO box. There is a PO box in the description section down below, folks. I got a package in the mail on the 14th of September and 
Inside was a flat wire spring for an AR-15. This is the buffer spring on an AR. Um, I guess Alan was watching my video about choose only one rifle and he saw my AR-15 in there. I don't know if he heard the spring twanging in there or what happened, but viewer Alan was cool enough to send not an inexpensive flat wire spring. I can't remember the name of the company. I have the packaging on my counter at home because I intend to send viewer Alan um, a cool little gift and, um, and, a, and a heartfelt thank you. So you guys don't have to send gifts to the OG. I'm well taken care of, but this is pretty badass. All right, the Fight Light SCR shoots the old standard 5.56 five, round or 2.23 round, pretty much the same damn thing. Uh, these rounds happen to be, the first one is a lead soft tip. This was uh, my duty ammo at one time. The one following right behind it is a ball round. It's some kind of a Winchester nickel plated ball round, but it is not in any way a soft tip. I think we know what's gonna happen with the old 5.56 round on our Uber driver, but I think it'll be fun to see. Let's give it a try. All right, I'm gonna start the 5.56 uh, five, rounds on the left, like a, like a typewriter. <sighs> Kids, a typewriter is like a computer, but uh, for some reason you put a ribbon in it. But I'm gonna put the 5.56 five, rounds right here and we'll work our way across. Soft tip, 2.23 two, round. Woo! Looks like that door didn't stand a chance. Round is zipped right through, that's the soft point. So reaching into the car, you can see right there, our 2.23 two, round zipped right through. Looks like it brought a little shard along with it. Shard, folks, shard with a D. Somewhere back here, looks like right about there is our 223 round zipping right through the plywood. Let's try the hardball round. Pretty sure we know how that one's gonna go. There you go. You can see the round right there. Let's take a look at our guy on the back. First five, five, six round. Actually left a little bit of powder around it. That's kind of cool. I guess I was too close. And it looks like our second round, check this out. Our second round actually keyholed through here. It's called a keyhole when the round strikes something and starts to tumble. Now in a 5.56 five, round or a 2.23 round, the round works best when it's tumbling. It obviously is designed to tumble through meat targets. That's what does its damage. This thing hit the car door and started to tumble. That's the exact profile of the round going through sideways. So that's kind of cool. And of course, along with it, it brought a lot of shards of other garbage. I think it's time to step this game up a little bit. Let's put the SKS to work. So in the interest of time, we're not gonna worry about any kind of a hardball round. I don't even think I have any, but I have this Wolf Ammo. It's a little bit of a hollow point on this round. It's kind of goofy as a hollow point. Pointless, if you will. We're gonna use this 1953 Russian SKS. Mrs. OG bought me this probably 15 years ago. Can you believe it? Maybe we need a review on this rifle because it is pretty dang cool for an old timey rifle. All right, SKS 7.6239. I'm gonna try and put the round right here next to the 5.56 rounds. 7.6239 round. Not even a project for that bullet getting through this door. All right, what should we try next? How about a 308 out of the Smith & Wesson M&P 10? Ouch! Now because I have exactly two rounds in this rifle, we're going to fire them both. First one is a ball ammunition. Some, I don't know, Z-Max or some sold at Walmart quite a few years ago. Let's give that a try. And then I've got some soft tip ammo to follow it up with. We kind of knew what the 308 round was going to do, and there it is. 308 zipped right on through. We have also been failing to label these. Come on, OG. In the uh, vein of guns that Mrs. OG bought me, back here at Christmas, she got me a Ruger American. Easy. She got me a Ruger American in 6.5 Creedmoor. I'd kind of been wanting a really long range rifle. 6.5 Creedmoor, of course, is going to zip right through this car door. I happen to have two rounds with me today, so let's shoot them both. First one's gonna be a Hornady soft tip, kind of a match round here. Really accurate, really expensive. And following right behind it there in the magazine, you can see the ball round. 
this abandoned cartel runway out here in the middle of BFE uh, isn't, he just doesn't have the will to live. This abandoned cartel runway out here in the middle of BFE, let's hope it's abandoned by the way. I moved our unfortunate Uber driver down a little bit so we can get a clean piece of paper. So we'll uh, simulate that he's ducking. He finally learned his lesson from all that incoming fire. He's ducking down in his seat, but I think the 6.5 Creedmoor is still gonna get to him. Let's take a look. Let's put some 6.5 Creedmoor rounds right here. Boy, that is a nice bullet. Almost no recoil on that rifle whatsoever. 6.5 Creedmoor right there. Nice fast entrance hole. I think you guys can see as we peek over the door here. Looks like our Uber driver took one right in the jaw. Didn't bother slowing that round down a bit. All right, 6.5 Creedmoor ball ammo, and then let's get to the 12 gauge and wrap this thing up. 6.5 Creedmoor ball ammo. Six five Creedmoor round number two. Looking over the top, we missed our bad guy. However, round passed right through. This is the one I'm most excited about. The 12 gauge Remington 870. The reason I am most excited about this one is because this shotgun or the Tough Later shotgun are the uh, long guns that ride around most in the OG truck. I like this shotgun for truck duty because not only does it have up close just devastating power, but I can throw a slug in here and uh, get out there 50, 100 yards pretty dang easily on a human-sized target. So I'm not too worried about being able to do some work with a 12-gauge, but I'd like to know what it does through a car door. Our Uber driver's running away. Let's get him quick. First up, we're going to run a round of Federal Flight Control. Nine pellet double-lot buck. Doesn't have a lot of spread, even if I was to go clear across this runway and shoot, we're still gonna get a pretty much a fist sized group. So let's put it against the car door and see how it penetrates. It's gonna penetrate, but let's see what it does to our, uh, our Uber driver. I'm gonna step across the cartel runway for a second here so I can get this federal flight control to spread a little bit. All right, so here's something kind of interesting. The 12 gate round made quick work of the car door. Most of the pellets went in one hole. Looks like we got a couple of flyers out here. Doesn't matter, they all pl plowed right through. Taking you around back. Kids' windows used to roll up by cranking a handle. Not weird. Most of our 12 gauge rounds came out here, but here's the cool thing. These rounds, by hitting this metal door, started to splatter, and we got something kind of cool. So I had this target sitting down kind of low on purpose. We've got all these pellets that spread out around his head. Not only carried some extra debris with it, but all the pellets hit that car door in one big old column and then started to spread from there. So we got ideal penetration for getting through to a bad guy inside of a car. Good times. Let's give one more round. This is going to be a one ounce rifled slug. Standard old foster slug. One ounce foster slug. Chamber loaded into the Remington 870. There is our one ounce foster slug. That, folks, is a, a BFH. All right, quick battery change on the camera. And the Navy's flying over, of course. Double hot buck. Come on, Navy. Double hot buck and, of course, our one ounce slug. Zipped right through. Ooh, OG finger wiggle. You're always complaining that you don't get an OG finger wiggle on the OG's Danger Show. Well, how about two? Well, this is pretty cool. I couldn't even see the Uber driver on the other side of the door. I just put a slug in there blindly. Look where we got him. I think an OG finger wiggle is going to end up with some splinters on this one. But we got him right in the mouth. 
All right, so there it is. I happen to have a few more 40 caliber rounds uh, stuffed into this Glock 22. I'm gonna go ahead and buzz this door up real quick on camera for you. I appreciate you guys watching again. If you have not already done so, please subscribe down below. Most of the viewers of these videos are not subscribers. I can't figure it out. I would appreciate you subscribing, giving it a thumbs up so that it appears on more YouTube feeds, and of course, sending a link of this video to 10,000 of your closest friends. Folks, I appreciate you guys watching. You guys be safe out there. And until the next video, OG out. I'm in loading rifles in the truck just now. I look down at my elbow. Oh my goodness. Look at that mess. Nobody makes me bleed my own blood. Nobody. Cut myself open on that sharp car door somewhere. Who knew?